Uh, hello and welcome to another tutorial on System Rylock in 5 minutes. Today we'll talk about fixed size array. Let's start with something we are familiar with. There are two bits, B0 and B1 in this simple code. And then in the initial block, they are assigned to 0 and 1 respectively. The same code can be written with one array variable instead of two different bits. In this case, the array is two bits wide, then each individual bit can be accessed using square bracket. But don't be confused with the multiple meanings of square bracket. The one above is to indicate the size of the array. In this case, it means that it has a size of 2 indexed at 0 and 1. Whereas the ones in the initial block is to indicate the index of which element to access. You can provide an array value to an array variable straight away without having to modify its elements one by one. Array value is indicated by an apostrophe and a pair of curly braces. The example on the right achieves the same effect as the example on the left. You can also use a for loop to modify elements of an array. The for loop here uses a counter, i, to count from 0 to 1. And the counter is used as an index to access the array elements. You can see that the counter is put to stop if it increments to 2. The 2 here represents the size of the array. It is hard-coded and therefore is not the best practice. We can use a system function to call the dollar size to query the size of an array. For example, in this case, you provide b to the function and it would return 2. Up until now, we have evolved several pieces of code. They all worked in the same manner. But this one here is a scalable one. Imagine that you need 10 bits instead of 2 bits. Looking at the code at the left, you will need to add 8 more variables and then you need to modify the initial block accordingly. But looking at the code at the right, you only need to modify the size of the array. Even better, if you use parameter on the array, the whole code becomes truly scalable. Now let's evolve the code one more time. There's a new syntax introduced in system Rylock called for each. If you are familiar with Pro, you will have known this. Anyway, the code at the left has an explicitly declared counter, i, and you need to specify how to count, such as the end condition and the increment method. With for each loop, it is simpler because the counter is implicit, and the loop will simply go through all elements one by one. An array can be packed or unpacked. These are three individual bits, b0, b1, and b2, as you're already familiar with. This is an array of bits with the size of 3, and this is an unpacked array. If you put the square bracket with the type instead of with the variable, it will create a packed array. This is the same concept as you've already learned from structure, where the bits are concatenated together to form a larger size variable. Except that in array, it doesn't need the keyword packed. The same concept can be applied to other types of variable. The only gotcha is that in this case, byte cannot be packed. Only single bit vector can be packed, for example, bit, logic, reg, and wire. An array can also be of little endian or big endian. This is little endian style and it is pretty common. You can reverse the order of the index and create a big endian array. You can also create an array by simply providing a size number instead of a range. This is how C programming does it and it is the same as a big endian style. You already know that you can assign one element to another. Be aware that the number 1 here means index while the number 3 here means size. You can also assign the whole array to another. You can even assign slices of array instead of the whole array. The only rule you need to follow is that the size must match. For that, you can even assign a big ending array to a little ending one, although you need to be careful about that because the index is a reversed. You can create a multi-dimensional arrays as well. This first example is purely unpacked, while the last one is purely packed, and the middle one is a hybrid. They all have the same size and low, which is 2 8 bits. For a two-dimensional array, you need two for loops to go through every element. Remember the for each loop that we discussed earlier, it can support multi-dimensional arrays in a shorter manner. The for each loop here is equivalent of the two for loops here. In summary, arrays provide a scalable solution to creating variables. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about variable-sized array.